President Buhari engages Nigeria Immigration Services on border management and control. Financial autonomy for local governments expected as an outcome of ongoing constitutional amendment. Plus, Niger State Government receives 90 abducted pupils of Salihu Tanko Islamia. Hello, this is Panorama, reaching you live from the NTA Enugu Network Center. I am Mina Adobe Kobasi. The Nigerian Immigration Service has been given marching orders to effectively manage and control the nation's borders towards making the country safer, greater, and more economically attractive. President Mohamed Buhari gave the order when he granted audience to the Controller General of the Parliamentary Organization, Mohamed Babandide. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo has the report. The meeting between President Muhammad Buhari and Comptroller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service, Muhammad Babandede, is in furtherance of the ongoing strategic engagement with critical stakeholders towards enhancing national security, stability, and sustainable economic development. Governed by the Immigration Act of 1963, CAP 2 laws of the Federation 2004, the Nigeria Immigration Service is responsible for, amongst others, manning all the nation's land, sea, and air border posts. This is through effective patrol and surveillance towards achieving a safer, secure, and prosperous Nigeria. I have been able to brief Mr. President on what we are doing, and he has given me additional responsibility on what we can do to make Nigeria safer, greater, and more attractive. Uh, Nigerians should be more happier that the borders will be more safer now than before and efforts will be done to make sure there are no counter crossing across our borders and all persons who are in our country who are non-Nigerians we must monitor to see what they are doing benefits this country. At the meeting held behind closed doors, President Muhammad Buhari also tasked the Controller General to ensure that the entry into and departure from Nigeria are effectively controlled while non-Nigerians in the country are properly monitored. As you are aware, each person enters Nigeria with a condition, whether to do a business or to establish a business, but not to take the business of Nigerians. So Mr. President has tasked us to make sure we looked at this issue deeply to make sure that Nigerian labor is protected, Nigerian economy is protected, not taken away by foreigners who just come to do business and take away the money, not to invest in. We'll do our best to keep Nigeria safer by effective border management and control and after entry control so that we can control those who enter our territory without doing something else which they have not agreed to do when they applied for visas. Mohamed Babandede made a strong case for Nigerians to be more patriotic and resist the temptation of protecting foreigners indulging in retail businesses in the country which he described as an economic crime. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. The ongoing constitutional amendment process by the National Assembly helps to achieve, among others, financial autonomy for local governments for good governance. The Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives, Ahmed Idris Wase, gave this pointer while receiving draft bills from youth leaders of registered political parties. National Assembly correspondent, Lami Ali, reports. The bills forwarded to the House Constitutional Review Committee seek the creation of more room in the political space for young people at the local council level. This advocacy involving youth from registered political parties is using International Republican Institute as a vehicle to pass the message and mobilize support. We are looking at local governance uh, because we feel that is the incubation uh, ground that is uh, that should provide us. Um, like the template for, for, for training, for, for mentorship, and then from there the young people can grow up the ladder. But like I always say, how well they do when they become leaders depends on how well they were trained when they were followed. And the best way to train them is to give them leadership opportunities when you are still there to guide them. The Deputy Speaker, in assuring the delegation of the present administration's commitments to reforms as that level of government says it is already in motion. You are helping 
us as a government on our key determinant areas as to what we want to give uh, to Nigerians, what Mr. President wants to leave as part of the legacy. You remember the uh, intervention he made as regards to the autonomy of the judiciary, uh, the, uh, the financial independence of the local government, and then what you are adding now is the secured tenure of local government. So you are invariably uh, intending with what the policy of the present administration uh, are trying to do in terms of the, the key focal points in giving good governance at that level. He urged all stakeholders to be involved for desired progress as the local government here, which is closest to the people. Lami Ali, NCA News. In Nigeria, a meeting in Abuja for talks on how best to reposition women for effective role in national development. The event is the Federation of Muslim Women Association of Nigeria, Foreman 36th Annual National Conference. Sawa Khalil Ibrahim reports. This performance describes who the woman is in the society. These women, most of them mothers, professionals, leaders from different parts of the country convened under the auspices of the Federation of Muslim Women advocating inclusiveness in all aspects of development post-COVID-19 era. This requires government at all levels to articulate an education crisis response plan that we sustain education access to millions of children in schools without necessarily compromising their safety and security. We're trying to uh, re-energize them and show them the way how to regain the, themselves. Yes. The Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Sa'ad Abubakar, UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Muhammad, among other keynote speakers at the conference, encapsulated women as builders and the foundation of society, urging them not to give up on the country despite the challenges. Don't rest on your own. You are the mothers. You are the first teachers of any human being born. The COVID-19 pandemic has intensified and amplified many pre-existing inequalities in our society. We must tackle this head-on by taking the opportunity to relaunch our development policies in ways that enable us to build a more inclusive, democratic and just society. Interdependent and that we cannot afford to leave anyone behind. And, um, as women, what we can do is actually to pray and encourage each other to live in peace. This conference is the 36th in the series in Abuja. Salwa Kalala Ibrahim, NTA News. Niger state government has received a total number of 90 pupils, including some of their teachers abducted from Salehu Tanko Islamia, as well as two others from the community in Rafi, local government area of Niger state. Governor Abubakar Sani Bello, who received the returnees, confirmed the death of one of the pupils, while four others that are in critical conditions will be under close supervision of medical personnel at the state health care facility in Mina, the Niger state capital. Hussain Musa has the details. The government has confirmed that a total number of 91 pupils, including their teachers, were kidnapped on 30th of May this year at the Salih Utanku Islamia Tegina, a Rafi local government area of Niger State. Sadly, one of the pupils who spent its eight days in captivity reportedly lost his life due to harsh conditions in the forest. Governor Bakar Sanabello, who disclosed that the state government, in collaboration with security personnel, devised measures to secure the release of the returnees, reiterates its resolve to bring to an end banditry in the state. They arrived in Mina, and since then, the medical officials have been attending to them to ensure their health status. In total, one children were kidnapped, and we have received 90. Alongside, there were two other abducted uh, people whom have been released as well. And 
parents have made evil parents think twice before they send their children to school. However, we will do whatever it takes to bring them to justice. We have put in place all necessary measures to hunt down and prosecute those involved in this heinous act. This incident should not discourage us. If our life is courageous, then what is the fate of the children? The government have contributed, individuals have contributed, the Muslims, you know it's, a, it's an Islamic school, the Muslims, the Imams have contributed, the pastors have contributed. The state government says the freed pupils will be officially reunited with their parents and loved ones at the Sali Utonku Islamia premises, Tagina. Emena Hussain Musa, NTA News. When 32 more students of Bethel Baptist Secondary School, Kajuna, have regained freedom from Badrick's captivity, Kajuna State Con Chairman Reverend Joseph John Hayab, who confirmed the release, says the students have been reunited with their families. Haruna Mohammed reports that the remaining 31 are expected to be released soon. For the first time, they increased the number that they are releasing by giving us 32. 32 is better than the 28, 32 is better than the 15, and even the numbers that escape. So many parents have happily rejoined with their children. The only sad thing is that there are parents who have more than one child in the camp, and some of the children are still with the bandits. With two batches earlier released, a total of 90 out of the 131 students of Petal Baptist Secondary School kidnapped by bandits about two months ago have now regained freedom from captivity and reunited with their families. Something Nigerians may not know is that this banditry had caused these children something. The fact is that the entire final set have lost a whole calendar year. They didn't write NECO unless if NECO is going to do another special exam for us in the next two months. Waik has started, and many of them are not still back, because those who suppose you cannot carry five or ten students to go and write Waik, while their friends and colleagues are still with the bandit. So all of them have lost. In the meantime, efforts have been intensified to secure the release of the remaining students from their captors. In Kaduna, Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. A break here. Panorama continues in just a moment. Stay with us. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. To Panorama, members of All Progressive Congress APC in Enugu State have been charged to embrace peace and unity in the interests of the party and the nation. Key players in the party made this call during an interactive session with APC stakeholders in the state, organized by the Party World Congress Appeal Committee Enugu State in Enugu. Dominica Onya has the details. Speaking at the event, the former Senate President, Senator Ken Namani, commended the State Executive Committee, led by Chikwado Chikweze, for his determination to succeed. However, he reminded them that the joy of being in a political party is to be in power. He therefore urged the members to buckle up so as to take over power in the state come 2023. I thank you for the type of discipline you have shown them here. Due respect to the panel that is before us here. If we keep it up like this, I don't know what will be our limits. Earlier 
in his remarks, the chairman of the IP committee, Mr. Bernard Miko, explained that the interactive session was born out of the desire of the party's national body and its committee on World Congress appeal to address the grievances which arose from the July 31st World Congresses. According to him, the national body of the party is concerned about the crisis which struck the Enugu State Charter of the party recently. He appealed to the party members to shun divisions as they cannot remain in opposition in the states. We are not going to exclude anybody. The more, the merrier. Because all the votes count for us to face the challenges ahead of us. Others who spoke at the event bowed their minds while commending the committee for its intervention and pleaded for it to temper justice with mercy in dealing with their erring members. The five-member APC World Congress Appeal Committee for Enugu State has Mr. Bernard Miko as its chairman. Others are Baba Gana Jimmy as the secretary, Mr. Emmanuel Wodu, Mike Ugu, and Ajia Miriam Ikulu as members. In Enugu, Dominica, Onya, NTA News. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Sambo Nanono, says the federal government, through its ministry and the Anchor Borrowers Program of the Central Bank of Nigeria, has reduced by 22% the money lost to importation of oil palm for local consumption as well as industrial use. He was speaking at a capacity building workshop organized for oil palm farmers. Chine Woye now reports. Oil palm is a perennial crop which serves as a raw material for pharmaceutical industries, biomass and biodiesel. However, with the discovery of oil, attention shifted from agriculture. And while many look forward to crude oil as the economic backbone of the nation, a barrel of palm oil is more expensive than a barrel of crude oil. Nigeria began to lose about $500 million every year importing palm oil for local production. The federal government is, however, bridging this gap with its many intervention programs, which has reduced the money lost to importation of palm oil by 22%. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, represented, said the workshop for oil palm farmers, however, became necessary to build their capacities on nursery and field establishments, harvesting and marketing, among others. This administration is, um, you know, uh, poised to uh, diversify the economy from so dependent on oil to non-oil sector. Oil palm played a very major role in the economy of uh, this nation. Key players in the agricultural sector at the event believe that with the laid down strategies for the realization of the objectives of the oil palm value chain, which included production and distribution of improved Tenera oil palm sprouted nuts for raising matured seedlings and promoting the use of motorized harvester, Nigeria will bounce back to its global position as one of the countries with the largest oil palm production. But naturally, oil palm grows here. We don't need to do much work. Just know the techniques, have new knowledge. And NIFO is there, therefore has done a lot of research. Because we have uh, decided on our own as a country to go back to agriculture. And now your palm production being one of the uh, value chain crops that uh, is doing well in the eastern region, we've gone back to what we know how to do. Lack of funding access to improved oil palm seedlings and improved milling systems were however named by resource persons as some factors that could affect palm oil production. In Enugu, China, Yangwoye, NTA News. And now to COVID-19 update. 618 new cases have been recorded in Nigeria, with Lagos having the highest number of 312, Akwa Ibom 89, Edo 71, Rivers 47, AKTM 32 Tai at 20 each, while Delta has 15 cases, Quara 13, FCT 11, Oshun 8, Oyo 4, while Ogun and Benue Tai at 3 each, same for Gombe and Kajuna at one case each, bringing the total number of confirmed cases to 190,333, with 169,000 
815 discharged and 2,308 deaths. This update, however, includes deaths reported in Lagos State on the 25th of August 2021, while five states of Abia, Nasarawa, Endo, Sakoto, and Zamfara have zero cases reported. With the receipt of over 18,000 Moderna and AstraZeneca vaccines, the second phase of a COVID-19 vaccination has been formally kicked off in Enugu State. Deputy Governor Cecilia Ezilo kicked off the exercise with a call on residents to embrace vaccination to stay safe from COVID-19. Susan Eze has the report. As announced by the State Executive Secretary of the State Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. George Ugu, Enugu State has successfully completed the first phase of the COVID vaccination and has received for the second phase 5,012 doses of Moderna vaccine, expecting additional 60,000 doses. The state, he said, also received 13,416 doses of AstraZeneca vaccine, admitting that the state government has been supportive with the installation of the needed cold chain equipment accessories and logistics to ensure 24-hourly power supply. Dr. Ugu and other key players in the COVID-19 response team enjoined residents to get vaccinated while still maintaining the non-pharmaceutical measures. We are therefore using this opportunity, this auspicious opportunity, to appeal to our citizens in the state to embrace the process of protection and prevention of COVID-19 vaccination. And we're encouraging those of us who took the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine to make sure that you use the opportunity to take your second dose. Deputy Governor Cecilia Ezilo, who had been vaccinated in the first phase, along with the state governor, assured residents of the safety of the vaccines. I urge Indian people to take this vaccination seriously it gives us life 1200 health workers have so far been trained to carry out the second phase of the covid-19 vaccination in the state in enugu susan eze nta news and that report forms our background for discussion and panorama today. And with me in the studio to expand the discourse is Dr. George Ugu, Executive Secretary, Enugu State Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Sir, you're welcome to Panorama. Thank you. All right, let's start with the statistics. What's the state of COVID 19 vaccination in Enugu State at the moment? Yes, uh, here in Enugu State, we have been at the forefront of uh, doing it the right way in terms of uh, prevention of COVID-19. Uh, we've just, we finished the first phase and uh, we were one of the few states that completed our target. We received 65,410 doses of AstraZeneca in that first phase. That was uh, flagged off by uh, His Excellency, uh, yeah. His Excellency, our uh, governor, who uh, joined uh, the state to accept the vaccines. And then uh, we completed our target, uh, making 100% uh, coverage uh, of that first phase. Now on Thursday, the 26th of August, Enugu State again received and flagged off and rolled out the second phase of vaccination. And uh, that is what we are doing and uh, the state has been very supportive. We have a healthcare-loving governor who follows us step by step in all that we're doing. And uh, currently we've started this second phase of vaccination and it's going on successfully. Okay, Doc, we are aware that you received a you know, massive quantity of COVID-19 vaccination lately. Do you have the storage capacity to preserve these vaccines? Yes, we're working hand in hand with uh, our national, national primary care development agency, our state government, and partners, we first of all installed a special ultra cold chain equipment that keeps Moderna vaccine at the appropriate temperature, which is uh, very low, and uh, we ensure that there is constant electricity supply to that source of uh, vaccine, supporting our sources with uh, inverters and with uh, 
uh, standby generators to ensure that there is no gap at all in the preservation. Okay, now that the vaccines are here, how is vaccination going? It is going well. We have distributed the vaccines because as we are keeping the vaccine in the right temperatures at the state level, we are also using uh, the solar uh, drive uh, uh, refrigerators in the various local government to keep it at the proper temperature. Okay. We have spread it out and it is going on well. Thank you so much, Dr. George. That's the much we can take on this discussion. Uh, thank you, thank very you so much. much for your time. Okay, um, I've been speaking with Dr. George, Ugu, Executive Secretary, and it was State Primary Health Care Development Agency. Let's now join Olumide Guntola for the latest on sports update. Nigeria's World and Paralympic Games record order in the women minus 61 kg para powerlifting event, Lucy AGK was on Saturday pushed two steps down to settle for bronze at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. In squash, stakeholders continue to react to the World Scotch coaching course held in Lagos where some Nigerian coaches were taking through World Scotch level two and three courses. I want to see the players play at a higher technical level to play better. The next time we go to the World Team Championships, we will get to just outside the first 10. In another news, Team Aqua Bombs' Eddie Dion Gumofia has set a new national record in men's 67 kg clean and jack category with a combined lift of 465 kg at the ongoing champion of champions national weightlifting championship tag Ibom 2021. The purpose of this competition is well achieved. I believe that uh, Lawrence Ikwebom will build on this foundation. You know, so let's have more of this. In grassroots football, Nigeria's only individual Olympic gold medalist, Chioma Achua, in collaboration with another ex-international, Amarachi Eze, have created a platform for young footballers in Lagos to realize their dreams in the game of football. We are trying to make Nigeria a better place, help these ones, take them off the streets, take them off crime. The motive is just to get them, help them get better in their career. Similarly, efforts are on in Kaduna State to discover football players for the country's national teams. The organizers of a scouting program promise to properly monitor young footballers through to stardom to mob those students from the street and give them a better life. I have some partners from Europe come in Nigeria to choose the best player of CMFC. In the English Premier League, with three actions continue Saturday as Manchester City host Arsenal. Norwich City will lock on with Leicester City, while Chelsea will be the guest of Liverpool, among other matches. With sports updates, Olum J. Kuntola, NT News. Panorama from the NTA Nugu Network Center. We thank you so much for being part of it. Remember to join the NTA as we stand against rape and rapists. To have a lovely weekend.